Contrast this to the airline industry, where SOPUs have dramatically decreased the frequency and impact of accidents. Today, we speak to Hadija Munsi to elaborate on the standard operating procedures for any company to be part of the oil and gas sector. It is hard to imagine ever having such devotion to SOPs in the oil and gas industry, but it is something we should strive for. Uh, PM Piping is a supplier uh, for pipes, steel pipes, uh, fire fittings, flanges, uh, bolts, uh, processing packages for uh, oil and gas. Uh, initially, that was our entry point into the country but we had to equally diversify uh, given the delay in the FID. My urge would be first uh, to uh, have them registered with the National Data Supplier, uh, National Supplier Database with the Petroleum Authority of Uganda. It doesn't matter what you're going to do. That is mandatory because for anyone to work with you, they need that certificate and they are the only ones who are going to issue you that. So most people don't know or some companies don't know that you just think you just come in and get the job done, but it's never done like that. There is a criteria that one has to follow. So, like I said, you start with registering your company, and that's the base. Effective SOPs that are diligently used by operators may be the driver for the next step to change in the process safety in the industry. Uh, there are not so many. Uh, there are about four. Uh, one being a zero tolerance to alcohol and drugs. That is a no-no in oil and gas. Uh, second being having a GMP, which is journey management plan. Uh, so that speed and time in, is managed. In oil and gas, um, people or people are not supposed to travel at night. We travel during day. And because you travel during day, there has to be checks. How many hours have you traveled? Have you stopped for a break, water, whatever it is? So those things are considered. Therefore, there has to be a general management plan for all of that. Time you set and time you arrive. The third one being uh, vehicle standards uh, for certain vehicle ages and requirements depending on which motor vehicle you're driving and for what certain things are standard and have to be there you need to we need to you need to have a driver that is experienced uh, in, or trained in um, four by four uh, off-road or uh, defensive driving to participate or to work in those particular areas health safety and environment are core values within the oil and gas sector globally most companies reinforce already existing measures of health and safety to address the impact of COVID-19 on the operations. The health checks in place are about four. Uh, one being the drug and alcohol test that is mandatory. Uh, the second uh, being um, the ability for workers or staff to work at heights because uh, not everyone can handle heights. Others will just faint and fall. Uh, the other one being uh, the eye test or eyesight test, because we need to be able to see what we are doing. We need to be able to correlate the distance of what we think we are seeing vis-a-vis -vis the actual distance of where the object is. Last but not least being the audiometry, which is the hearing test. The pre-health checks that uh, we are going to experience uh, and are experiencing one of which will be um, the cost uh, is going to go higher for the pre-health check because you and I both know that we do not have the drug, it's not in anywhere yet and the ones that are doing testing uh, because it's the first of its kind so it's going to be on a higher cost so and yet you have to pre-do it prior so the cost of it is high. That was it for this week's episode of Business Perspective. Catch you again next week. Have a fruitful business week. My name is Linda Ndungwami.